Hey guys, welcome back to another Star Wars Legends review. Today we're going to be looking at the second novel in the Jedi Academy trilogy, Dark Apprentice. Dark Apprentice was released in 1994 and was written once again by Kevin J. Anderson and follows directly after the events of the previous novel as the New Republic has obtained the Sun Crusher, the earth-shattering weapon from the Empire that they are trying to determine what exactly to do with. But while that is all going on, Luke is training a new Age of Jedi at his academy. And while that is going on, there is an evil Sith Lord spirit that is tempting the members of his academy and turning them to the dark side. And while this is all going on, there's another plot involving Admiral Dalla, who is trying to destroy the New Republic and is also attempting to find and kidnap one of the Solo children. If that synopsis felt like it was all over the place, it is because the book is also a little bit all over the place. Now, when I reviewed Jedi Search, I originally really liked that book a lot. And it did have its share of problems, and I was probably a little bit too lenient on them. But I did genuinely just enjoy that book book so much. It was a nice fresh start for a new Star Wars story that I was willing to look past some of its flaws. However, looking at the second book, I wish that I was a little bit harder on that first book because a lot of the problems that I had with Jedi Search carried over to Dark Apprentice and then some new things started popping up. So before we get into some of my negatives with the book, let's get into a lot of my positives because there are plenty of positives in this book because I ended up still really enjoying it. I want to say first off that Kevin J. Anderson is really good at telling a very entertaining story. It's not always coherent, but it is always a lot of fun. He knows how to put you into fun little situations that are really enjoyable to read, but you better not think about them too hard because then you start running into some problems. But I think he does a really good job of setting up certain storylines, such as the stuff going on on Yavin 4 with Luke's Academy. And it's really interesting seeing a new age of Jedi being put together by Luke and him training them. And that stuff is a lot of fun. And also what's a lot of fun are the little connections here and there that Kevin J. Anderson has to the overall mythos of Star Wars. He connects stuff to previous books that have been written, as well as does some connections to the comics as well, which I was not really expecting, but I should have expected because of what they did in the previous book with connections to Dark Empire. However, in this book, they connect it to stuff from Tales from the Jedi, which is a miniseries that I talked about previously here on the channel. And it talks about a lot about uh, Exar Kun, who was kind of the Lord of the Sith, the big Lord of the Sith at the time. And what's interesting is he hasn't entered into those comics particularly yet. So as far as I know, this is the first kind of reference to Exar Kun that would later be explored in Tales of the Jedi, which I think is extremely cool because this really delves into the mythos of Star Wars. It makes it a whole lot richer and more interesting. And I found that incredibly fun. It's also great seeing a lot of our other characters such as Han and Leia, Lando, Chewbacca, and also the twins, um, Jaina and Jason Solo. Um, all this stuff is genuinely a lot of fun. It's really enjoyable to read and Kevin J. Anderson, again, just knows how to make something really entertaining. I also think that the third act of this book really does shine. It's really um, a lot of fun with some very tense moments and some crazy twists and turns that I was not expecting. Like, an entire system blows up at the end, 
And I also like that this story continues to delve into the character of Kip Duron that we got introduced to in Jedi Search. Um, he is kind of this loner character that Han Solo kind of took under his wing. And that stuff with him and Han Solo, yet again, is really good. Um, kind of being a sort of father figure to Kip. But then Kip eventually goes to uh, the Jedi Academy because he has the Force and can use it. And we really focus a lot on Kip and his eventual turn to the dark side, um, which I was not really expecting at all. And it's honestly really cool, but I do have my share of problems with it. And this is where I'm going to probably get into a lot of my negatives with the book. One of those negatives, I'll just start off with Kip Duron, is that we never really get a sense of how long he is at the Jedi Temple because it really feels like he just kind of is there for a day and then turns to the dark side. I mean, um, Exar Kun is able to influence him and teach him the ways of the Sith and begin to doubt his own master. And we really don't get a sense of how long Kip Duron is there. And it feels really, really quick, um, his turn, and doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And he eventually becomes a character that I genuinely like to this really bratty character with this tonal shift with him that just, for me, doesn't work, but I understand what's going on, and I think it could have worked if we, you know, slowed down a little bit, because this book really likes to rush into things, and that's another problem with the book. I think there's just a lot going on here. Um, the previous book also had that problem. I think that Kevin J. Anderson just likes coming up with interesting ideas and then just implements them. He just kind of, like, has a bunch of ideas and then he throws a dart at a dartboard, basically, and sees what sticks. And it feels that way. The book really has a very odd structure to it that I just found really confusing because the story just doesn't have a beginning, middle, and end. It just is kind of all over the place. The first act is probably half of the book. Honestly, I couldn't figure out where the first act ended and where the second act began, and it was just very, very odd to me. I also think that he dwells on things that really just don't need to be dwelled on. Um, for some reason, he has a subplot where um, Admiral Akbar is, you know, getting old, and he is like an old man that shouldn't be driving anymore. It was very odd, and it just didn't add anything to the story at all. Um, also, um, even though these segments were fun, where we see Han and Lando playing Sabacc, it's always a lot of fun watching these characters play Sabacc because it is a very fun game and everything, and it's fun to read about. However, it's always at the worst moments because, okay, so um, in the book, Han learns that Leia might be in danger. And so him and Lando, in, before that, decide, hey, let's play a game of Sabacc to see who will win the Falcon. I'm like, your wife is in danger and you're playing a card game just for fun, almost. And they do this three different times in the book. And it's just like, this is ridiculous. Why are we focusing on this? It just was really frustrating to me. Also, again, with the structure and everything and characters that were introduced, the story just really feels like a jumbled mess of some really interesting ideas that really don't combined together to make something extremely satisfying. I mean, Dala is kind of supposed to be our main antagonist, but she 
isn't really in the book that much and in the end really doesn't even do a lot. Um, she does start, you know, like bombing several different planets and everything, but it feels like a secondary story to the main plot that is going on and all these little stories feel very disconnected and don't feel connected at all like they did in say Zahn's um, Thrawn trilogy which had different plot lines going on at the same time but they all came together at the end and this just isn't. So this has me very nervous for going into the third book because I hope I hope that that book is really good and enjoyable, but if, you know, this book is telling of Kevin J. Anderson, it is showing that the third book might also be a little bit of a mess, and I might have to complain yet again, which I hate because I still genuinely enjoyed this book. It was a lot of fun. It has, you know some of my favorite characters in it, and it's fun seeing these little connections between the comics and the books, and just all that stuff really made me continue to read it and love reading it, but it's still very flawed. It's definitely flawed like the first book, but more so. But anyway, guys, with all that said, I'm gonna give Dark Apprentice a 7 out of 10. Well, guys, I want to thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I would recommend this book, especially if you liked um, the first Jedi Search book. Um, but I will say that the plot does get a little bit more complicated as well as a little bit more convoluted, and some people might not exactly like that. But I still, in the end, really enjoyed the book despite a lot of its flaws, but it was definitely a step down from that first book. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review.